Okay, there we go. Uh, g'day everybody, welcome to Late Night Imber Discussions, where we're going to be having some chats about uh, all things Imber. In particular, this is going to be a very interesting discussion about something that may not be Imber. We're not exactly sure yet, that's why we're going to have a talk about it. Um, of course, um, I had mentioned on a Facebook post, which has weirdly disappeared from my Facebook page, uh, that we're going to be sort of updating the show a little bit. Obviously, we've got it on a different day. Uh, we're here on a Thursday night if you're over in the States, or it's uh, Friday afternoon here in Australia. As you can see, it's still very bright. Uh, we're, yeah, so we've moved the day just because these two clowns that are with me continually having to be AFK when we want to do the show on a Sunday because they're at MLGs and other events. So I figured that a Thursday night would be a little bit better. It works for me and generally it should work for these two dudes. Uh, and uh, yeah, other than that, we're going to look at um, just making sure that you guys can see um, Wigan and a murder as well. But um, I'm still waiting to hear from a good buddy Hanzo, who's going to get make. Uh, I'm going to ask him if he can perhaps put together a little overlay for us. It'll look very pretty. And then also I'll need to actually figure out how to use Skype properly. So uh, we'll get to that hopefully maybe next week. I'm not actually sure if I'm going to be in town next week, uh, but we will find out very soon. Um, of course, uh, in, in in the show here, we've got our resident uh, our resident Terran slash Protoss player Wigan. How are you doing? I'm doing doing pretty good. I'm making making the show circuit this this weekend. This yes. is the third show I've been on in three days. Yeah, you're, you're a bit so of a I'm star. pretty excited. I get to do things. Yeah. It's, uh, what what else What else have you been on? Let's give some shout outs to these other guys. So. Uh, I've been on Shifting Gears, hosted by Clutch, of course, and then I was also uh, earlier today on the Starcast, being interviewed by Garrett and Kyle. And people should totally check that out. I think it's amove.tv is where you can go for that, oh, which so is it's perfect. So it's a Terran since I do play Terran, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and we were talking about you know Heart of the Swarm, MLG, uh, the Reddit drama, all that stuff on there. So, yep. It's Good stuff. Good little show. Nice, nice. Um, of course, we're into the new season. Are you going to be playing this season? Yeah, I'm already playing this season. How are you, how are you going? Not now? much. But, I mean, um, yeah, I, I want to play. I want to play a lot more. I hate being bad at video games, so I need to just play more. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, so, all right. Uh, and, of course, our... Zerg slash Protoss guy. It's a lot of Protoss on this show. I know. I know. I have had a couple of comments that say all of you guys play Protoss in some capacity. Well, too bad. Uh, I don't really give a shit. How's that for no fluff? Um, <laughs> our uh, Zerg Protoss uh, mastermind here is Omerta. How are you doing? Doing just fine, sir. Thank you for having us on again. Problemos. It wouldn't be a show without you two, because otherwise it'd just be me doing commentaries, I guess. Um, oh, shit, speaking of which, I suppose I should put SC2 Tactician on so I can draw some fancy arrows and stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, what about you, Season 8? <laughs> Are you actually going to uh, play some this time and not just custom It's going to continue being bad at League of Legends. That's my Yeah, I hope, I, I, hope zero, I can pull Zero ladder away. games played by him. I hope I can pull myself away from the old uh, League of Legends for long enough to play some games. I'm still going through a little bit of a racial identity crisis, so okay. I'm trying to get that figured out. Wait, so is it still Zerg and Protoss? It's not Terran? Yes, I'm just trying to decide which race I want to to play with more. Alright, All right, well, uh, of course we had the... Um, thank you, Golem. Loves a bit of Protoss. Uh, of course we had the... <laughs> MLG on the weekend, which was uh, quite a lot of fun to watch. Apparently 17 billion people on the planet tuned in. Uh, that was very cool. Uh, we saw all the Casper players and also uh, just, you know, some very good some very good matches, of course. The one standout for me as a Protoss player was uh, Zoke, who managed to beat DRG, which is, you know, that's pretty cool. A feat. Sasse yeah. Sa too, man. Sasse as well. Sorry, I forgot about Sa Mr. Sasse with his fucking random assortments of probes in gas. Alright, I'm going to put one in this gas and two in this one. We'll put seven in this gas just because it's cool. Um, oh, Golden was there. Oh, awesome. Golden. Thanks for coming, Golden. 
Nice, nice. Um, but uh, yeah, so there was a lot of cool stuff, and, and of course we saw a lot of Heart of the Swarm stuff as well, which is all being covered by everyone else. So this is a strategy <laughs> show. Uh, we are going to be talking about, generally, we're going to be talking about strategy, perhaps some things that are imbalanced as well. Um, but, uh, was that all I needed to rant about for the first part of the show? Yes, it was. So what we're going to do today is we are going to have a look at uh, everyone's favorite unit that gets used all the time. Oh wait, no, we're not looking at marines. We're looking at uh, we're looking at carriers, which are of course a unit which has been uh, slated to be removed from uh, from from Heart of the Swarm once it's out. Uh, of course, any of the guys that were at MLG would have played around with the little uh, booths that were there and would have unfortunately had to deal with a unit which, in my opinion, for the Protoss is just going to be completely useless, which is the Tempest. It's all good to have. 22 range. Dude, dude. It, could f it could fire yeah. SCVs, and it would still be good. <laughs> yeah. 22 range. Oh my god, I want someone to make that. A fucking an air unit that shoots workers. <laughs> Alright. It's actually... It's act but see, in all seriousness, it's going to be super useful and very... S yeah, I situations. like it. The, the, the it's, not, it's not an A-move unit like carriers are kind of in StarCraft 2, where you get like 20 of them and then just proceed to win the game the, but like and obviously this is this is good sort of segue into what we're going to talk about but the problem that i think blizzard have created themselves with carriers is that they made them a move in in yes. in brood war as anyone who played brood war would be able to testify you didn't you did not want to a move with carriers goliaths will shoot you from seven screens away because they were quite balanced with their range as well um if you if you know if you su for some reason did it against a Zerg, uh, like extremely late game or a weird game in PVZ in Brood War, um, Plague obviously just massacres the carriers after a little bit, and then you've got Scourge everywhere, which also do quite a bit of damage, and you didn't want to aim with them. But in in SC2, because there aren't those sort of those counters that require micro, all you do is aim move, but the problem is, is that if you, I don't know how to explain it properly, if you do a move, then um, you can still run into trouble sometimes, not to mention, it's very boring. So, I, what I would have liked to have seen is that, you know, given that the bunker had at least 15 changes during beta all the way up to now, and the carrier has a grand total of none, what, why wasn't the carrier adjusted at all? So... I don't, I don't know about that, but I just feel like the carrier, the role of the Tempest is actually generally the same as a carrier, but whatever. Mm. I think they have some pretty, pretty different roles, and I think the problem with the carrier is that it doesn't really have a role that fits with the way Protoss is played right now. Yeah, I, I think mean, that's really the biggest problem with carriers, because carriers themselves aren't, they aren't a bad unit. Mm. They're just not worth getting to. In, in taking the risks to get to in most games because they just don't fit a role that can't be filled by Psy Storm. Yeah, you know? That's fair enough. That's well, I'd, I would actually kind of disagree with that. I think that Psy Storm, like, splash damage in general in this game is just so good because of the way the units path. And so your two splash units, the Templar and the Colossus, are just going to be better at dealing with, like, those huge armies of, you know, like Roach and Marine Marauder, like those two units are way better at dealing with them than the carrier, so, like, it, there's just never a reason, really, to build a carrier, because... So how are you disagreeing with me? That's, like, exactly <laughs> what I said. Well, no, it's... Well, I'm just saying... Listen, Tasteless. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's no, pay I, attention to the whole conversation. Well, no, I am. I, I'm saying the... The carrier doesn't, f like, it fills its role fine, like, it's a good siege weapon and, like, a good massing unit, but it doesn't do the area of effect damage that you need to actually, like, win games. Is, so. so it's like a Colossus, but worse. In a way. Yeah, kind of. Here's, here's a question, unit. then. Like, we'll, <laughs> we'll get into these games in just a second, because uh, I know everyone's probably getting restless. Um, here's a question. Would you mass up well, we're on, doing, on Tempest? I was going to say, no, we're doing carrier games, not. so I'm pretty sure we can start the thing. 
game and then ten minutes later get into the useful stuff. That's true. That's true. Still so, be talking. <laughs> so you wouldn't you wouldn't mass tempest. That that's no that's, no yeah. oh um I tried one game actually and it's it's they're seriously very bad in a straight fight. Yep. But um because they shoot so slowly and they're pretty soft. Um, but they they are going to be selectively very useful in those situations like sniping brood lords, sniping ultralisks, okay. um, breaking siege lines. Um, just generally laying siege to expansions and sort of forcing a fight on terrain that you want. So you would you would never mass them, but like throwing a couple of them in there, kind of kind of like broodlords are used, and then protecting them could be extremely effective. Okay. Yep. All right. So things to consider, of course. Uh, let's get into these games. Have you guys got game one loaded? Spaceman oh. versus <laughs> Indio. Yep. Yeah, really cool. Uh, yep. All right, we're at zero. We're gonna start in three, two, one, go. Uh, Alrighty, starting in the bottom left-hand side of Shakuris Plateau is uh, Spaceman. He's actually a redditor who uh, posted this. I actually put a little uh, call for help on the subreddit R Cast It. Um, and said, um, said Megusta. And said, uh, yeah, does anyone have any carry replays uh, of diamond or higher level? So this is, this is, this one in particular is a diamond game. Uh, and Spaceman answered the call. His opponent, who is apparently not a Redditor, but apparently still knows what Megusta is, uh, is Indio, who's the blue Zerg over in the right. Horizontal position's very sexy for Protoss on this map, I personally think. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So we're gonna t we're gonna go through basically basically a pretty good map for everyone but Zerg. I feel like <laughs> yeah. I really enjoy playing it as Terran, um, but that's mostly because I like mecking. Yeah, um, and it's always been a very strong Protoss map. On uh, on this show, we're gonna go we're gonna try and get through three replays. If we sort of run out of time, or it kind of looks like you know we don't need to go through the third one, um, we'll uh, but. Uh, I think I messed up what I was going to say. Um, we're going to look more at the transitions of carriers. How are you going to use them? Um, at what point do you want to use them? Uh, and do you want to stick with them? Do you want to use them as a support unit? Or do you want to use them as uh, your actual goal unit? So we'll have a look at these things uh, in this first particular game. This is going to be looking at using them as a little bit more of a supporting unit. So. Um, First off, um, Wigan, you uh, you mentioned you you tried to play a bit of a carrier game before. Is do you do you reckon it's a a, a particular unit where you're actually going to be using them more more in support supporting roles, or is it going to be something where you sit there late game and say, "Look, bro, I've got 15 carriers. We're done here." Uh, <laughs> I mean, my the way I look at carriers, it's sort of like you have to want to get them for some reason. There's not really like a, a real point to doing it. So I set out to just play a game where I got to carriers. Yep. Which meant I various I did some like double Stargate harassment into eventually getting three and three and four bases and just sitting on them and getting carriers. Like I feel <laughs> you you can use them kind of as a, in a support role. Um yep. but I I, f I feel like if you're gonna get carriers, go ahead and get as many as you can with a mothership and go nuts. Right. Um, a murder as a as a zerg. Uh, when you see carriers, do you do you feel you know you've won the game because the guy is going to be very slow with moving out, uh, or or is that something where you may see the fleet beacon and the the carrier little hologrammy thing inside the stargate, and um, you know you're actually really worried about it. Uh, it really depends on the situation. Like, if I think the scariest situation for carriers in PVZ is when the Protoss like has six bases and remaxes on carriers out of like six or seven stargates, um, and just like all of a sudden they have like twelve carriers, and you're like, oh well, fuck, that really sucks, yeah. you know. And and that that can happen. It it doesn't happen very often, but I think that's like the situation where they're scariest and. Like at that point, when a Protoss has a bunch of carriers and Templar and Archons and a mothership, Zerg actually can't win the game. Like, it's that's I think that's yeah, that the one that. thing that's truly like overpowered in this game is that army against Zerg because there's just 
unless they somehow max on Corruptor and like don't get Vortex and or Stormed and Archon Toileted and kill every carrier, then you just like lose the game. Yep. Okay, so it's it's a situation where if like I suppose I suppose it's like any real sort of um, end game unit like a battle cruiser or broodlord where if you let your opponent get to that stage where they're at that ridiculous sort of moment where they've got you know more than more than ten or upwards of ten, um, then it can be really scary depending on you know how you're playing it. So um, mm. obviously that's a little bit different for broodlords because you know. If, if I, I would say carriers are actually just the scariest of those three options because yeah. broodlords yeah. you're gonna see most games like they get them at like twelve minutes now. Yeah, something ridiculous mm -hmm. like that. And BCs are just bad, <laughs> and everyone loses when they go BCs. <laughs> so, so I, and I think honestly, carriers are just a little bit stronger in a conventional game than BCs generally are, unless it's like a Terran mirror. Um, because, like like Galen said, you you can get to that point where like you have enough enough carriers, enough archons, and a mothership that like you just you can't lose unless you make a disastrous mistake with micro or something. Yep. Yep. So um, they're good for that. That's that's the upside on the carriers. The downside is everything else. Yeah. <laughs> um All right, so we got uh we got sort of a very standard Stargate based opening here from Spaceman. He's got a th he's got a couple of extra gates here. Um which isn't what you always see out of someone who's wanting to get carriers, but as I mentioned, this is the game where we're going to look at uh more of a supporting role for the carriers, uh, like a little bit of, um, you know, they're going to be the Robin, not the Batman, and uh, as we can see here, Spaceman's just going to head over. Got a couple of Zealots out, going to do a little bit of pressure, maybe he can take down a Queen or uh, a Hatch if he's extremely lucky, but uh, looks as if we are going to get a few Roaches out very soon, which will help with this uh, defense. Yeah, this is kind of like a build that was really popular like a month ago, where you'd get like four gates with zealots and plus one, and like one or two void rays to go cancel a third. But Zergs have gotten really good at defending it, so it's kind of fallen out of popularity. And it, if you don't kill the third base, you end up being really behind when you're doing this. Yeah. I think, um. And as you can see here, like, he hasn't actually lost a single worker just yet. Like, he may lose one. No, no. No drones going down. So, as you said, that um, kind of puts Spaceman in, in a little bit of an uh, not a not a terrible position, but you know he's kind of thinking, "Oh shucks, that's that's kind of lame." Um, he's definitely not in a good position. Down a lot of workers, and uh, his tech's kind of been countered. Yeah, he's going to be stuck on he's going to be stuck on two bases for quite a while if if this Zerg knows what he's about. Yeah, and look, that's. That's um that's one reason why every, everyone will know that I like Stargate play in PvP, but in PvC I actually really hate Stargate play because one of the best yeah, defenses too. one of the best defenses is actually just to make queens. And as a Zerg, if you have if you make, you know, five queens, you're not you're not actually gonna say, Oh damn, I've lost drones because of course they don't need lava. Um, you're going to be actually sort of saying, all right, cool, I can, you know, when I've got some extra APM available, I can put down some more creep tumors, uh, and also use them for a very sort of mediocre defense on the ground as well as the air. So that's, that's one reason why, um, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, going Stargates, and it sort of irritates me sometimes when, like, every single pro uses it every single time. Um... Mm. They don't anymore. Well, yeah, you know, very rarely it's, see it's really fallen out. Yeah, like I noticed it a bit at MLG um, that some of them were using it, and I was just kind of like, "You guys really, really should stop doing this because the Zergs are all getting very good at defending with the Queens um, and all this sort of stuff." But um, as you can see, Spaceman's gotten out. He, he did have quite a few voids out. We've got three, four on the map at the moment. He's just getting a couple more back at his base and he's done something very interesting he's gone real really quick up to that Templar archives as well of course this is going to be a lot of gas being used up he's got void rays he's got immortals now coming out as well along with storm tech being researched and a few Templars so he's uh what if uh a murder a few a few of this zerg and um you know you got across we've we've uh, he has gotten in an overload to see what's going on what are you what are you thinking here <laughs> 
Again, you're sinking like your max right base. now on roaches, yeah. so you're just clicking. <laughs> you just walk up to his base with a bunch of roaches and just kind of click on everything when the game. Yeah. But, uh, like, the nice thing about Void Race is, I don't, does this guy have roach speed yet? I can't tell. Yeah, he does. Uh, no roach speed. No, no, no roach speed. See, that's oh, a problem, speed. because Void, Void Race can stop slow roaches from actually doing anything, or at least, like, slow them down considerably. But if you have speed roaches, you can just kind of, like, run up there and, like, do a lot of damage, but, I mean, I'd be scared of any kind of attack right now. Like, if my Scar Stargate doesn't do significant damage, like, ugh, it's just so scary, man, because, like, he's, the Zerg player hasn't macroed, like, perfectly, and he's, like, 100 supply ahead, yeah. and could just, like, come kill me if he had the right units, but you see these voids are going to do, actually, a lot of damage to these slow roaches, and storm's done, so... Yeah. That's good. Oh, that's a good storm. So it was, uh, it was a really nice defense there from Space Man by, you know, one T on the ramp. Uh, putting down some storms, uh, the Immortals did the rest of the work and the Void Race came in for the cleanup. Meanwhile, up the top he's picked up that third base as Protoss well. Protoss players just excel at. It's sitting in their base until they can win. <laughs> that's why they added the yeah, Tempest honest. in, you know, because... Protoss players were having to move out of their base too much, so they added a unit that could just shoot from inside their base to the opponent's base. Yeah. I, I think the Zerg would have been in good shape here if he had just gone up and checked for that third instead of just throwing away his whole army for nothing. Like, that would have... If he had just gone and right-clicked on that third, he'd be in such a good position right now because he'd have his fourth coming up. Uh, he's got, like, Hive, Infester, all that stuff, like, and if you can get to that against a two-base Protoss, you're just, like, so far ahead, it's insane. Yeah. I wouldn't even mind seeing just, like, a Spire, because you've seen that much of a commitment to Void Rays. It's probably worth yep. it just to deal. Like, there's, there's five Void Rays plus the ones that were killed earlier out, you know. Why not get a few Corruptors or something? So our, uh, our Zerg here, Indio, after doing that attack, has obviously lost lost a little bit of supply, which is not nice for him, but he is picking up that Hive tech. He's also got uh, drops on the way, which is interesting. Uh, and uh, he's taken a fourth base up to the top here, a very interesting fourth base. I We don't talk about it much, but take which particular bases you should take on a map? I don't know, do you, do you guys think that this is the greatest position to take? Mm. I think it's always better to expand away from people as Zerg. It's just kind of a very aggressive base when you can just take a much safer one at the top right. Yeah. But on the other hand, maybe if you're like thinking super far ahead and you're playing for like late, late game, you'd rather mine that out before you mine out the one at the top right. But I don't know. I think he just did it because it's close. Yeah. So he feels like it'd be easier to defend. But yeah. I don't know. Just one of those random decisions. Random that. sort of things, yeah. And I mean, at this at this level, it's not as if, um, you know, we're at, we're at a pro level, like in Pro League or, or GSL or something like that, where one tiny thing is going to help compound and decide the game later on. This is, you know, it's not going to be too much of an issue, but uh, looks as if Indio is going to try and attack in. Interestingly, not even supply capped. Uh, he's got some infestors at the back with a lot of energy available. It's... Uh, See what happens here. Meanwhile, Space Man, he's prepared with some storms. He's got Archons, Immortals, and Void Rays here. It's certainly an interesting decision to just, like, not attack that much and attack with this army. Yeah. Not, not one that I'd really recommend. Infestors are nice, but, like, Roachling doesn't really do anything at this point in the game. Yeah. Would you uh, would you agree, Omar? After after seeing the Zerg sort of push in like that with the Infestors, perhaps he should um, perhaps Spaceman should now just head up, put the fourth base down at the top side, uh, just because he knows that he's got he he's, he saw what the Zerg had, some Infestors, Roaches, and 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 Links. Would you just go grab the fourth up the top? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Be expanding or attacking. Like if I saw that army with what I have now as Protoss, I'd probably just go like try to kill him. Because he's got much better tech. He does have one like gloriously expensive army, <laughs> even if he's yeah, got and he just gets so many storms, so many but storms and void rays and immortals and archons. It's like a horrifying thing to face off against. And again, this is the the point we're getting at where we talk about why people never make carriers. Because like, hey, if you can just go win the game right now, like, why not just go do that instead of making carriers? 
yeah. Yeah, I really he's like a man, so like he's what Galen said. The best time I think to see carriers is either like really early in some like ridiculous white raw like carrier harassment that you can kind of do on this map, or as a remax later. Yep. Um, in, like a split map, like thirty minute game kind of scenario. Yeah, because the I think with carriers they're not really good until you have a shitload of them. So. There's only two ways you can get a shitload of them, and that's to like try and hide them for as long as you can early, yep. and then just all of a sudden carrier, or be able to make like six of them at a time, which is yeah. Like, oh, yeah just make them against mech because if you make a mech player build like twenty Vikings, he loses the game. Yeah. <laughs> all right, looks as if uh, Spaceman has decided it's go time, putting down some storms, and the Archon's just uh, putting up the pimp fist, and everything else is just. Melting here, of course. The models at the back doing that extra damage. The uh, oh, all those testers. feedbacks, <laughs> beautiful <laughs> feedbacks there as well. So, spaceman just in a uh, very nice position here that he's uh, just cut down that army quite a lot. Um, as we can see, there is now a carrier on the way, along in fact three carriers. So he's uh, this is where that supporting role for those carriers comes in. Now, of course, as uh, as most most people would know, carriers actually do have really good DPS. So it's not as if they don't really do too much, but as, as we've been sort of going on about, um, it's more of an issue of getting to the carriers and also then, uh, you know, making sure that you have the correct amount. It's a, it's a Protoss first world problem. You yeah. have so many nice things. Why get these carriers when I can just get storms and archons and hey, hey, colossi? Hey, hey, did you imagine stim carriers? How good would that be? Not in my... Most horrible nightmares, could I imagine stimmed carriers? I could just imagine, like, Tassadar's voice in the carrier. Oh, that's just stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, uh... Yeah, this is kind of... I don't know. Um... Do we think that India has not done enough? Has he... he's been too passive? Uh, he... he made a mistake. Um in his transitions like he was really hot ahead in supply and then just like threw away a bunch of roaches and even then he was still pretty far ahead but then he just decided to stay on roachling with some infestors and no hive tech he could have very easily just taken the map gone up to hive and been quite difficult to kill yeah or just not thrown away all his units in the first place and this is like the point where the protoss army is just like almost unkillable yeah there we go, the Voids are cleaning up pretty much everything, the carriers there providing a little bit of DPS and uh, those Immortals just wreaking havoc on everything in the ground. Storms everywhere, it's uh, Storm City up in here and uh, yeah that is pretty much the end of Indio, he's of course supply block now as well and there is GG. So, like I said, a little bit more of a supporting role here for the carriers. Um, if the army was a little bit different um, and perhaps uh, I don't know, would you say standard if it had more stalkers and a lot less of those immortals? It would have been fine with stalkers, yeah. Yeah, so in in that sort of army where there's a lot more stalkers and, and your, Zerg, your Zerg opponent has made that uh, that very big uh, spine crawler wall like just along here, um, that's where the carriers can be really, really useful because you just say, <laughs> look at me, I'm up in the air. Your spine crawlers can't poke me in the air, so... Um, that's uh, that's that's one reason to have them there as a supporting unit. So what we'll do is we'll go into the next game. Thank you to uh, Spaceman for sending that in. Um, so in your chat, Giebling, Giebling, I think is his name, is asking why we think that Stargate openings are bad if they don't do damage. And it's just a matter of giving the Zerg player too too big of an advantage in the mid game if you don't cancel his third and even if you do you have to kind of kill drones too which is increasingly difficult and unlikely for you to have actually happened against decent Zerg players the well mm. it doesn't I, I think you're looking at it wrong because a Zerg player can seriously max at 11 minutes and you won't even be able to have a third base by that point um, if you go for a, for a star port opening yeah and you're just not really going to come back from that. 
Like, yeah, you can. Exactly, and that that's part of the reason, like why we, why we why we talk about it, is that, um, sorry, why we mentioned it is mm -hmm. because because of that fact that the immortals actually provide, in a way, a little bit better damage and utility than than the void rays do because. Realistically, the Void Rays are only good when they're charged. A, a Void Ray on level 1, you know, does less damage than slipping over a banana, so... Um, so, I don't know. That, that's, that's mainly the reason why I hate it. And I also just hate saying to the Zerg, look, here you go, have some more Queens, because that's how you stop this. And, you know, as, as I said before, a Zerg who makes Queens is not going to be an unhappy Zerg. They're, yeah. they're maybe going to be a little bit lower on their minerals. They're, they've, you know, they spend maybe three hundred, sometimes four fifty minerals, but, um, but you know, it's it's not as if that's a huge issue for them. Yeah, but my biggest problem with the Stargate openings is Zerg literally doesn't have to spend any gas to stop it if they don't want to, Bam. and so you're investing like thousands of gas into. Stargate and like all the other units you need to try and move out after that and they can seriously just stop it with queens and spores and make drones the entire time so you know you get to this point where if your Stargate hasn't done significant damage Zerg's on like 70 drones at the 10 minute mark they have four queens and four hatcheries or five queens and four hatcheries and then they can just like make so many units that you can't really like try to move out and get a third base Alright. I think we're going to have to agree to disagree then, yeah. Jubling, because I, I, I think if you yeah. don't, if you open Stargate and don't do damage, then it can't, like, it just isn't worth it in the current meta, the way Zergs are playing right now. Mm. They're playing yeah, so great. I mean, there's, I mean, there's a reason that pro Prodosses, like, aren't doing Stargate at all anymore. I mean, they, they it used to be that they were doing it every single game, yeah. but they've all kind of stopped doing it because the Zerg players know how to stop it without taking any damage. At that point, they just get too far ahead. And I think, as a very, very slight side effect of the, the recent patch with the Queen range incre increase, as I, as I have been blabbing on about, getting the Queens <laughs> is not a bad thing for the Zergs. It, that's that's then saying to them, all right, I now have I now have five of these bitches that have what is it, five range, and mm -hmm. you know that helps with you with your zealot uh, zealot defense. If if someone if Spaceman came up and um, and did that attack again, and there were there were already like three queens there with some decent micro and everything. You shouldn't actually lose a queen. Like he only lost um, the Zerg only lost a queen then because it, I think he was busy getting the other queens up to the base. But if you're prepared with a, with a couple of extra queens because you saw the guy has a Stargate, you, you shouldn't even take damage from the Zealots at all. Like unless they're concentrating their fire on drones or some some random thing like that. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's just. Agree to disagree on that one, because um, of course everyone knows that I, I like DTs instead of Stargates as well, so that's uh, my personal thing. Let's go into game Those number two. Those have just never been good. <laughs> Shut up, they are too. Um, see, watch this, watch this. Jubling will actually like DTs, ready? Uh, anyway, um, let's go into game number two. This is on uh, Daybreak. You guys ready to go? Yep. Oh wait, on Daybreak? Yeah. Oh, oops, okay. That's the third one in my pack. One okay, title number two. <laughs> uh, mine are just random replay pack numbers. Are they? Yeah. Alright. Um, you good? Yep. Okay, uh, three, two, one, go. Game number two here on Daybreak, probably the coolest map that has ever existed, is going to be between Nex Apple. Uh, I think I've spoken to this guy before, but I can't remember. He's going to be our Blue Zerg down here. Uh, I don't know if this is from TSL, but I think it may be. Not exactly sure. Um, his opponent up here is ST Ace in the purple. Um, I love this map. I'm going to say it again. I really like it. 
just in case you guys needed to know. This is my favorite PvZ map, man. Yeah. I fucking love this map for PvZ so much. Take like the fastest third base ever and just... It's amazing. Like, the, it's so long that it's really hard for them to just kill you with Roach Spam. Yeah. Um, one thing that I've I've noticed a little bit lately, which is, ver again, a very re really small tactical thing, is that, um... Oops, not that one. Um, players have been doing their uh, third base walling a little bit differently than normal. Some players will... They'll have... I'm drawing it on the, on the stream. Um, so you guys won't be able to see, but they'll they'll have the nexus here at the third. They'll then instead of doing the traditional way, which is just to make a bunch of gateways that sit out the front here and just you know fully wall it off. I've made the Great Wall of China. Um, what they'll do is they will actually put the pylon back here and then put the gateways down and then use the nexus as part of the wall and you know have a cannon on each side of the of the nexus just to make sure that's protected. So. I don't know, that's, that's just a weird thing I've been noticing a little bit lately, is that people do that wall a bit differently. I don't know if it has too much effect on how things go. Uh, obviously, if, if a big roach ball gets in close to the nexus, they can snipe it a lot easier, but um, I don't know. So, I'd imagine it's like a preference thing. I don't really see why one would be better than the other. In fact, yeah. it seems like the one that includes the nexus would be more susceptible to roaches. Yeah. Than, uh, yeah, that would that would be I don't know. Maybe it's maybe that. it's about like a transition thing. Like if you just don't want the three or whatever however many gates you need to throw down to full to form the full wall, you just like do that instead. Yeah. Alright, uh so Ace for anyone who's who has not watched any of the GSL in the past God, I can't remember when he did it. A couple of months ago I think it was. Uh Ace has been actually playing <laughs> really well. Uh, against some of these Zerg players, he's been really focusing on, on a lot of um, like multiple war prism harassments, uh, either with DTs or with um, or with storms and zealots. And he had, he just tore apart a particular Zerg in GSL a little while ago. I can't remember who it was, but it was it was actually really phenomenal to watch that game because he was just dropping everywhere. He even had prisms just flying through the middle of the map because he knew that the Zerg wasn't able to stop them. Um, at, at some particular points, and it was just really cool to watch. So, I really like some of Ace's play. Um, it, it could be because he does DTs a lot, but um, anyway, <laughs> we've uh, got him starting out pretty standard here. I'm going to use the pylon as part of the wall, which is a little bit different. Not everyone does that. Um, and uh, yeah, just going pretty standard here. We got the two gas. There is a uh, cyber just on the way as well. So. Uh, Apple is also going pretty standard, taking the third, getting those drones up, making 600 dr uh, drones at a time, which is pretty balanced and stuff. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Zerg's pretty nifty like that. Yeah, yeah, Zerg's, Zerg's really cool. <laughs> All right, so this map for uh, the Stargate opening, we're not going to talk about whether it's good or not. We're, that we've ended that discussion for now. Uh, Stargate opening on this map. Um, a murder? Is it is it still viable given the, the distance of the map, or is it something which you might want to steer away from? Uh, uh, I think this is this is like a pretty reasonable distance by air compared to most maps that, that are being played these days. Yeah. Uh, I just it, it's kind of it kind of it just really depends on how you go about it, right? Like, I feel I feel like if you're gonna go Stargate, you might as well like double Stargate and be really aggressive with it, because you're basically committing to putting yourself behind if you don't... Well, we've had this argument a yeah. million times already. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's viable on this map, especially... Well, I, actually, I don't know. I don't know if it's better against that fast of a third, or a slightly later third, because that was a really quick third by yeah. the Zerg. That was almost like straight after the spawning pool went down, I think. Yeah, it's it's good on this map, especially because Apple like isn't spreading creep at all. Like it it takes a while to get creep all the way down to your third from your natural. Like especially, I mean, the way I do it is I use my first inject and then I use the second set of energy from that queen to place a tumor in my main. I'm trying to get it down there as fast as I can, but he's got like no creep. Luckily, I mean, there is no Stargate just yet, so yeah. 
Yeah, that's good. And it, this is kind of similar to what I've been doing in PVC, which is really strong. It's getting super fast robo off of one gateway. I think that's a really good timing for it, too. It definitely gives you a lot of options. You have, you're very safe because of Immortals. You can even apply pressure with them if you want. You can get a Prism out and a Mortal Drop. You have a ton of different options. It's obviously very nice for scouting because of the possibility of OBS. Not to mention um, and you have to be really uh, careful on this map because of how long it takes to run over to that third. Uh, so a lot of the common pressures, like like the heavy sentry, like zealot sentry pushes that you might do to cancel a third, are gonna like you're almost guaranteeing that you're gonna lose that army because it takes so far to get across the map. Yeah. If you do that, so target out, target openings might be okay on this map just as a default because gateway openings are kind of bad. Because of the yeah, because of that sort of run distance. Just because of the walk distance. Because honestly, like most gateway openings, you are relying on just pure zealot sentry to deal damage, and uh, it's just all gonna die on this map because you have to go so far. Yep. So Ace is going to take his third base reasonably quickly here, but of course he is uh, pretty much he's he's pretty safe here. He's got five sentries down at the third base, along with a couple of immortals as well. Uh, he's got even a few sentries inside the main, along with a couple of extra gates as well, which are really going to help out with uh, the reinforcements. And I think, I think this is obviously a bit of just of a, a bit of a uh, sort of a fake pressure, just to say to Apple, you know, I've got all these sentries, I've got a few models, and the common thing right now is for Protoss to uh, do that push with all of the uh, the sentries and the immortals and a warp prism, as you as you mentioned before. Yeah. Yeah, he was being pretty ballsy moving those sentries and immortals out there. You definitely don't want to get caught out if the Zerg players just like randomly decided to build a bunch of lanes. Yeah. It's, yeah. Be a little careful. Yeah. He has so many sentries though, look at that. It's eight sentries now. Eight sentries, two immortals, and six stalkers. Meanwhile, for Apple, he's got uh, quite a few lings out. We've got 38 lings along with uh, 19 roaches as well. Obviously looking to make sure he has uh, the defensive ability in case that push does come, but I think he, he saw the third, didn't he? So he should, yeah. He wonder, saw, he saw the wonder what happened to Apple this game because he should have more drones and he should have a much higher supply at this yeah, point. Yeah, I guess, I guess he got faked out by those that immortal or something. He must nah, have thought he, there was he went in, he went in faster really quick. So oh, did he? Oh, okay, I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, never mind then. That's that's just about right. Although I, <laughs> I just want to like point this out. out. What Ace is doing, leaving those three sentries at his natural ramp, like, Protosses still just don't do this for some reason, and it's something that I do every single game against Zerg. Like, just split three sentries off from your army, put them in a separate control group, and there you go, you, you have complete control over that ramp now, so you're, like, not susceptible to counterattacks or anything, that's just so good, I'm really glad Ace is doing that. Very good player. So, um... <laughs> We've got Apple up to 74 drones now as well. He's looking to uh, perhaps put some pressure on, but Ace is well aware, as you said. Uh, beautiful sentry usage there at the ramp, so he's uh, blocked that off for the time being. He's, he's well aware because of this uh, observer at the front. He's got two of these, which are positioned really, really nicely, just to make sure that he can see. Is he coming this way? All right, I'll move my forces down the ramp and just across here to make sure that's reinforced. Or is he coming uh, into the natural here? Uh, in which case we'll have to get everything up there to defend. So he's, uh, I'm so happy, dude. Like this looks. Yeah, this is like exactly how my PZs look on this map. Like it's just so good, man. Two, <laughs> the two observers. He doesn't. This actually is a murder yeah. game, guys. We're actually watching. Uh, we're on his live stream. <laughs> the, the one thing I'm sad about is he doesn't have a third observer. I don't think. No, but he did get hallucinate, so he's scouting that way. No, he's only know, he's only got two. Yeah, so you like you constantly want to be scouting like against the fast third base you or when you get like a quick third base. That, yeah. yeah, you want to see exactly when Zerg is getting hive and think yeah he's getting his fleet beacon right away. This is just so good, dude. Like Ace really understands this matchup. Like you want to completely skip Colossus and skip Templar and just go straight for a mothership when when a Zerg is rushing hive like this. And so I'm really glad to see. Doing that, so good, so good. He's a great player. Um, looks like we'll have a little bit of a battle just outside the third base. Really big arc of force fields there, uh, throwing over the beach balls and uh, getting them over the net, scoring some points with those infested Terrans. But uh, 
they are all going to die, and Ace is going to keep most of his units alive here, which is quite nice, and uh, fend that attack off for the time being. As you said, Blink is on the way, the Mothership is also just being chrono boosted out as well. No Colossi, as you said, uh, skipping that to make sure you can get down to that Mothership tech as quickly as possible, because you will need it against the imminent Broodlords, which will be on the way soon, I presume. Uh, has he got the greatest spy? Just about. So, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but this is going to be this is going to be a the game of late game carriers where you you say to yourself, all right, I've got my three, four bases. Generally, you probably want to look to four, um, and you know I've got all I've got all the tech out. We're holding the map quite nicely. That's uh, I think that's one important thing. You can't have uh, you know, interdictions inside the natural expansion of random roaches just popping in when you're busy trying to get your carriers out. Um, so that those are some some of the key sort of requirements is just to make sure you've got good map presence to be able to stop any of those sort of run by attacks or anything like that. Um, and then you want to look at uh, taking over to the carriers in that late game stage. And as we, as we just saw there, uh, the Warp Prism has picked up a couple of the Immortals that were out. We've now got a Colossus on the way, and the upgrades are just about uh, done here. Here comes that Prism. This is what I'm talking about, Ace being an absolute boss. Yep. Stomps down on that Spore Crawler, says no detection here for you, buddy. Uh, and it looks like you may try and get some more damage inside the vein as well. Yeah, he's definitely figured out the recipe for success for Protoss in this matchup. You know, keeping his sentry count up, you know, not losing um very solid, solid defense until it's safe to to take that fourth, which is usually pretty late to be honest. And just understanding that he wants to play for the very late game. Like that that's what you want usually as a Protoss player. There's a point where the game will start to tilt in your favor and it's usually it can it can basically be in two two at two points either a late game when your mothership comes out it's the most common or b if you're hitting like a plus two blink with archons that can be a very very strong timing for you to go kill a zerg player. Man, he is so good. He's just like he's doing multiple harassments around the map. We just saw an attack on the third base with some zealots. It didn't get a huge amount of damage done, but. Uh, he got something done while he was attacking with the Prism in the main. He's then also out here defending against these Broodlords, which... Where are they? Oh, they're over here. Um, the Broodlords, which are just coming across, and uh, he's just making sure he's got everything available for that. There's another War Prism hanging, hanging out across the side of the map. A second one is also going through the top section of the map. So he's really uh, utilizing that Prism as best as possible. Meanwhile, he's going to have to uh, look out for this attack that's coming in. So. Uh, a murder. You've got the he's he's got the fourth base here. As the Zerg, what um what I know this is sort of a bit deviating from talking about carriers, but uh, you've got multiple attacks coming in. You've got a prism inside your uh inside your main base. You've got a prism coming in at random points. Is there one up at the fourth? No, there isn't. What do you what do you need to do? Do you need to establish yourself and just hang out at your own bases and just wait? Uh, to to kick back the, the the attacks, or or do you need to take it to the Protoss? No, I would right now. I would just be making like as many spines and shit as I could, just covering my bases with static defense, and like slowly start trading out my Roachling for more Infestors and more Broodlords, and just try and get this like massive super army of like fifteen Infestors, like you know twelve Broodlords and some Corruptors. And queens, don't trick the queens. Like eight queens in that can just make a world of difference with transfuse under spy crawlers. Yep. And it uh, looks as if. And he's doing that though, yeah. he's, he's adding a sh shitload go. of spines. It's good. Got good a lot of spines up. coming up. I think it was uh, uh, up at 100 drones for a moment there, but uh, where is the. Where is the second prism? I swear there was another prism up the top here. There's one on the fourth base, I think. I thought there no. was a castle. How many are on the map? We've got one prism on There's the map. There's one at the bottom center. Yeah. There's just one. So the other one up the top must have died. Uh, meanwhile, he's <laughs> he's built another two. So we've now got three prisms on the map. Uh, Ace just sacrificing some of his units here to uh, get a little bit more supply. Or was that the buildings? <laughs> oh, that was the buildings, I'm sorry. Uh, picking up the immortals now. It looks as if he's going to head inside the main. In fact, down to the natural. So he's going to... Uh, 
perhaps drop in these immortals, say hello to the queens, and then fly by and uh, get inside the natural and do some damage there. Or is he? No, he's not. He's got. Oh, okay, beautiful. He's going to drop inside on the natural expansion where the Great Aspire is. Is he going to be able to get it down? I think he should be able to. That is. What is, what is that? Why doesn't anyone else do that? <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. That's a, that's a cool and stuff. At, at this point, as, do as a Zerg, reasonable amount of damage to armored <laughs> structure. <laughs> at this point, as a Zerg player, you really need to start scouting if they're going for a ton of Stargates because. If you're not prepared for that, you're just in so much trouble. Speaking of Stargates, attacking up the top is this uh, big force here, and there it goes. <coughs> Mothership uh, coming into effect, pretty badass. We're going to see a lot more of that in Heart of the Swarm, I tell you what, because that is going to be available on the Mothership core, providing everything stays as it is right now. But uh, yeah, as, as you mentioned, uh, the Zerg needs to be uh, making sure that they're aware of any possible switches and as we can see here ace is already on his plus two to weapons plus two to armor is also on the way as well along with shields and there are the beginnings of the carriers of course um a lot of people will also know that templar are also a really nice requirement uh, not a requirement but a very nice thing to have with your carriers um so ace is making sure that his storm is prepared as well and look at this Huge fever of broodlords in the middle of the map as well. He's got a total of, uh, what's that, 13 broodlords. He's absolutely insane inside this fifth base here for Ace, so he's not uh, he's not going to be able to save this one. Sacrificing Corruptors, by the way. Should you sacrifice those to take that mothership out? And how many Corruptors is it worth? Start with you, Wigan. Uh, it really depends on the situation of the game. If you feel like you're going to win right now, take it out to let to facilitate you winning the game. Yep. Um, especially if you have no idea that there's uh, like a Stargate switch coming, then then yeah, it's fine. It's, it's okay to lose them, I guess. But uh, I, I don't think he really needed to do that right now. Yep. Um, especially given that he is kind of aware that there's more than one Stargate that's been built ever. <laughs> um, I would have much rather seen him push his creep up a lot better and move those spine crawlers up and spore crawlers up and, and like sort of slow push yeah. his way in. Something, um, which, something which we've been seeing quite a lot of is that slow push of the spines. It's a slow march of, uh, of those giraffe looking things uh, to try and get closer and closer and use them as cover for the uh, for the Um yeah, now if you do kill that mothership though, like a carrier army does does become vulnerable. You really late like late game Protoss is completely reliant on having that mothership in that vortex available. Yeah. Um. So more, pr uh, more prisms are on the way from Ace. Uh, he's got a he's got two being built right now. Of course, there are five carriers being built. We've got two stargates down the bottom. <laughs> there are two in the third God, base. God, those well. storms. And uh, wow. This Money storms. Look how fast these carriers die though. Yeah. Ooh, yep. Look at that. This is a problem. And those are oh, those are much better upgraded carriers than those are corruptors. Yeah. That's why you need that. You absolutely need that vortex. You need a vortex and an archon toilet. Yeah. And uh Or just one or two more storms. <laughs> He's very close to having enough storms to defend that carrier fleet. Not to mention uh corruption's a pretty cool skill. It's a useful skill to have, yeah. no doubt. I know. People, people are sometimes unaware of it. And I see, I see players like lose uh, corruptors without even putting down a corruption. It's like, dude, at least put it on some stalkers or some shit. Come on. Anyway, uh, Ace losing carriers here. He's of course got some uh, extra attacks going inside. He's got a prism inside the main, which is just jumping in, trying to get some damage done here. If he can take down the spire and some of this extra tech inside the main, that'll be quite nice for him. But uh, it looks as if he's busy back home trying to defend with the carriers. So, um, Omoto, we've got all of these Broodlords still out. He's got 13 along with more Corruptors being built at the moment, along with a couple of Investors as well. Uh, should you be... Do you want to be careful if you are if you can see carriers are on the map at this point? Or because he's killed so many of them, you just, you're just going to go straight in for it? I'm actually not... I'm kind of surprised that this are, like... 
the Zerg like threw away Waits Minion Festers at that fight back at Aces Third a while ago. He just like walked them into a bunch of Colossus Fire. If he hadn't had to make remake all these Infestors, he could just be remaxing on Corruptor and just like winning the game. Yep. So like that little bit of unit control like really is putting him in a tough spot here, but Right now, I think these Broodlords are just as good as dead, and I really don't like this retreat, actually. I think he should just go into the main and try and kill as much stuff as he can, like kill all these gateways, kill the Cyber Core. Because, I mean, you're you're not saving those Broodlords. Your Infestors have no energy. Like it, I don't know. I guess it's working out because Ace couldn't really chase him down, but yeah. it's a tough spot to be in. And now he's sitting on quite a lot of carriers. He's got a total of six at the moment. A few more are just about to pop out as well. Uh, where are those? Sorry, we actually had uh, another prism that went inside the natural expansion. Got some damage done. Took out a hatch. Uh, but uh, is now just being cleaned up as well. I think there are still... Yep, there are still zealots inside the main. Now this is the problem, I think, uh, as a little bit of a side effect from not... Uh, using those Broodlords or sacrificing them inside the main to try and kill off some of this tech is that he now has all this supply of Broodlords which does nothing against carriers. And I think yeah. that's, that's also something to consider if you are up against those carriers because uh, it's just sort of something where, you know, think about your unit efficiency. Um, as you said, he was at a point where he could have done some damage inside the main. I mean, take out a fleet beacon, that bitch costs a lot of money. Like, a lot of money and gas to make. If the guy is going for carriers and that's his own, his only force, then he'll be quite pissed off if you take down the fleet beacon. So, um, yeah, and I also that like, wasn't the greatest idea from Apple. Well, just, just knowing that Ace was only on four bases, like, he doesn't really have the the money to remake infrastructure. Like, he can't just afford to remake, like, 12 gateways right now. So if you kill, like, his entire main, that's that would have been really good. Yeah. You know what I'm pretty impressed by Ace's game plan this whole time? I mean, he did a really good job yeah. of forcing, of forcing uh, Apple to build less mobile units to deal with the carrier force. Be it the Broodlords, the Corruptors, the Infestors. And then just abusing that in the same way that Terrans abuse it with drops by using those speed prisms. He did a lot of damage. Like at one point, Apple dipped to like 30 drones. That's that's like huge. That's why Apple can't remax. Yep. In fact, yeah. We've and I think that's uh, that's what's really won the game here is that that harassment during all that, like barely surviving with the carriers, but dealing that much damage with the war prisms. Yeah. Exactly. Like. It's a beautiful thing of having these uh, these prisms when they can actually get in there and do some damage, especially when you get speed. I, you got to make sure you don't neglect speed. It's a it's a really good thing um, to get that upgrade, just so that you can fly in, drop the units down, and then get out if possible, or just actually get in as quickly as you can. Like we we're talking about the size of the map and the the, the distance to get across to your your opponent's base, and with um, with speed, those those war prisms are just absolutely blindingly fast. I think they're are they close to uh, Ling? Links, maybe? Hang on, I'm trying to find a prism. Is there a prism left? No, there isn't. I don't know. They're huge fast. Let's just say that. Speaking of huge... They're they're super fast and yeah. super good. <laughs> Speaking of huge, 222 carriers. Pretty cool. Pretty huge, especially when the Zerg player has just decided not to get upgrades. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Actually, yeah, Apple's sitting here on 1-1 one, one on his air units, of course. Uh, it is nice that the Corruptors are armored, which also helps, but when you're facing off against, uh, how many carriers is it? 15 carriers, 120 interceptors are on the map, a mothership, four Templar, and a zealot in a pear tree. Um, this is going to be, you know, the game's done. Regardless of how the map looks, there's a lot of creep everywhere. Apple's got this base up the top. And he's got, you know, these uh, 13 Broodlords and 26 Corruptors. He's still in a very terrible spot. So, you know, we've pointed out some of the, <laughs> we've pointed out some of the, insu inf uh, the insufficiencies of how Apple played with, uh, you know, not kind of sacrificing the Broodlords, not being aware of some of the uh, multiple attacks on his base. Um, was there anything else that you noticed, Omoda, that he could have done perhaps a little bit better? 
Ooh, it was a nice dodge on that vortex. Um, no, he. I mean, at this point, the carriers have just like snowballed, like out of control. Like, the, honestly, I think one of the turning points in this game was when he just like walked all of his investors into Colossa, and he lost like ten investors, which is so huge, man. Like, that's fifteen hundred plus gas. Oh boy, that storm! It's like fifteen hundred plus storm. gas that you now have to replace in Infester instead of being able to like remake corruptors or or do other stuff. So, like that's a, that's huge, man. That was so huge. I would say, um, I would say, uh, upgrades would have been very nice. Like this that late too, in the game, yeah. you sh you should have upgrades, and you need them to be able to fight. Like you know, you know, you're gonna be basically only building. Corruptors and Broodlords at this point, so go ahead and just get the Arabs. There's no reason not to. And I would have really liked to see him aggressively pushing creep with these spine crawlers. I think that would have helped quite a lot. Other than that, he played like he played a pretty good game. Like he was he was in um pretty good position the whole way through. It's just like Protoss gets to that point, uh, late game, where if like they haven't lost beyond a certain point, just kind of like against Terran, there's like no reason they should lose anymore. And it's, that point is usually about when a mothership has a hundred energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At this point, I mean, once you have Templar with this army, it's just like impossible to kill. Like the only thing that Apple can do is like get a really lucky neural on the mothership, and that's just not going to happen. Oh. Fungal everywhere. Yeah, so obviously, as everyone knows, uh, this game is effectively over. Anyone in the chat, if you uh, recognize some some things that you wanted to ask about in Ace's play or in uh, Apple's play, please, of course, post something. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one's effectively done. Let's see if Apple is uh, maybe going to try and get in with these corruptors here, but he's having no luck with that at all. And now, with Ace establishing this base, he's uh, got it all. Wrapped up, I would say. Where are those carriers at? Two, two, three. Those carriers. The um, three armor is about to complete. Had some beautiful feedbacks there on those infestors. Those are just infinity damage carriers now. <laughs> Let's see if how many kills have. have some of them. Oh, it was a really nice storm drop too. Just happened at, at uh, the one, two, three, four, fifth, sixth, sixth base. base. My bad. <laughs> Sorry guys, in the, uh, watching the stream, I didn't actually notice that, but uh, yeah, so sort of waiting for uh, Apple, to <laughs> Apple to give up here, I mean, you know, is there any hope, is there any way he can do anything, I mean, this is 3-2-3 three, three carriers now, I don't, I don't actually think there is a single thing you can do. No, no but at I mean, this point, the carrier count's just out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Though, to be honest, like, like we said, um, earlier, like, those those could be anything that fills that supply and is high-tech for Protoss in this situation, and he's probably gonna win. Yep. Like, if that's a bunch of Archons and Colossi, then the same thing's kinda gonna happen. Yeah. However, carriers are totally badass, so... They certainly getting, are. Getting invisible. What the hell? Okay, what? Go, <laughs> go to the carriers. Is the top one just invisible? Oh, I missed Are you still it. replay? I missed oh, it. never mind. Forget it. Yeah. For some reason, the top carrier is just completely invisible. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry. Let's go to game number three. This is my uh, buddy here playing <laughs> as the Zerg in this <laughs> in this very interesting game. Uh, <sighs> All right. Ready? Game. Th one second. Loading it. Okay, I'm ready. Deal? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. There he is. Alright. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Um, <laughs> okay. Let's go. Uh, three, two, one, go. Alright. Uh, you said this is a friend of yours? Or? Friend of mine, Song Byung Gu. The red zerg down in the bottom right hand corner, of course, uh, who knows that name? Just people should know that name. No? 
you guys don't know that name. Or everybody disconnected on Skype. Which which oh, game? Yeah. Or which name, sorry? Song Byung Goo. Ah, uh, probably should. You should. But I don't. You should. Uh, no, this is not someone from DTG. Um, this is a friend of mine who plays uh, on the C server. This is uh, Song Byung Goo is uh, actually Stork's name. Oh, okay. <laughs> I only know a couple pro gamers' actual names. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's all right. I rely on the yeah for the rest of them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, his opponent is up the top. It is a blue Protoss by the name of Pyro, I guess it is. Uh, this is going to be a game where you are aiming for the carriers as your main strategy. Not, we're not going to use them in a <laughs> So it's going to be a weird game. It is. Trust me. This is, <laughs> this is incredible. And look, um, my friend had said to me, what, what, you know, what do you think of this game? What uh, you know? What other things should I have done? And I was kind of like, "Yep, that is very weird." Um, there were a few things, and we'll probably get to those during the show. Like I'm sure uh, during this game, I'm sure you guys will be able to point them out as well. Um, Ohana, of course, a very sexy map. I love this map for PVZ. Uh, this one in particular, I really like doing the third before cyber build, um, which I think is a lot of fun. Um, but, uh, of course, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, but, yeah, so... Risky, risky business is how I'd describe that build. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it definitely is. It definitely is. Uh, I'd do, like, a super fast third on this map, too, though. Yeah. Um, I, I just like it because, like, we've mentioned in, in previous shows, you can just block off the natural expan uh, the natural ramp here and just say you know what screw mm -hmm. it I'm gonna knock down the rocks we're gonna use the uh, third base as the the entry point for uh, coming in to say hello oh, is he gonna get a second gate tell me he's gonna get a second gate ah, I didn't get a second gate. <laughs> no. No. Um, there was a there was a build in pro league where a guy went for carriers really quickly where he got two gates and applied some like uh, zealot pressure, like really cheap, easy zealot pressure with like four zealots out of two gates, mm -hmm. and then went straight into double star gate and took his third behind the double star gate. Was I thought that was actually like. Was that that M18M game on Ohana? Uh, Stardust? Uh, yeah, it was on Ohana. He spawned in the south, not the yep. north. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was M18M uh, doing a build that's a l a little bit similar to what we're gonna <laughs> what we're gonna see here. Uh, but uh, we'll get to that very soon. Um, uh, Emoto, what do you think of this for Zerg players? This this map, sorry. Uh, I think it's pretty good. I mean, you can get your third base pretty easily. Taking the fourth and fifth can be a little bit tricky, and this, but the center offers you a lot of paths to like counterattack and set up flanks and stuff like that. So. I don't know, I think it's I think it's a good map overall. I really like this map. Um Wigan, have you played much Protoss on this map? Uh I've played like a bare minimum of Protoss on this map. I've I haven't played too much Protoss since it's actually been out. Um but I like it a lot. I like it for Terran and for Protoss. Yep. I think it's just it's just a nice, solid, simple map. It's like very easy to control space on the map, and it's very easy to to uh, spot anything coming your way. So I, I don't know. I just I just like it. I feel like it's it it reduces a lot of randomness because of how easy it is to see things coming on this map. The one issue I have is actually very hard to cannon rush this map, but uh, other than <laughs> that, oh shots. Than that, isn't there some? I'd figure there'd be some really nice spots like there, you know, the mineral line. There's a couple. Like I'll I'll let you guys in on these secrets. Number one, uh, if you're against the Zerg, you can still cannon rush this bottom position. As you can see here, in the bottom uh, right hand side of the Zerg main, there is actually still a little bit of spot here that you can put. You can put. I think it's like a pylon. Uh, you can put two pylons across and then block it and have enough room for one cannon at the back. It doesn't actually hit the mineral line, apart from one of the mineral patches. But um, 
Uh, it's kind of annoying. And of course, if someone puts this warning pool here, then you can uh, hit that. Um, other than that, the main way you want to cannon rush this one is to use a gateway, uh, use a gateway and a pylon to block off a cannon that's building. Um, but yeah, that's some crazy special gulzy tactics we won't really get into too much. But anyway, back to this <laughs> game. Uh, hey, apparently that works on professional Terran players hey, at MLG. Hey, so. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's basically what happened to Polt, right? Yeah, I think yeah. it was Polt. Uh, yeah, Sase versus um, Polt on Daybreak. Um, but uh, anyway, we've got the Stargate opening here from Puro. He's got a Void Ray out taking down one of the Overlords. Of course, this is where, the, as an Overlord, you get very worried and make sure you have health insurance. Um, what'd, you, what'd you say? That's a super fast Fleet Beacon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fleet Beacon. This is the part where things get interesting. Um, do notice that uh, Wolfgate research has not been done. He's actually yep. researching air weapons. We've got another Void Ray coming out, and there's a certain unit coming out of the Natural Nexus. Yeah. <laughs> that's... That's pretty interesting. I don't... I, I like the idea of skipping uh, Warp Gate. <laughs> If you're gonna do stuff like that, I think it's actually not even a terrible decision if you're gonna do like a heavy Stargate play. Believe it or not, yeah. Um, that was actually that was a little tactic used in Brood War as well. You, you, there was a build against. Oh shit! Who was it? I think it was PVT. I think he used it because, of course, normally in Brood War you would get the Singularity charge, which increases the Dragoon attack range, uh, the equivalent of the Stalker for those of you playing at home who don't know Brood War. Um, and there was a particular build, I can't remember it exactly, but you actually get air weapons in, uh, like when the Terran's scouting you, and instead of getting the Singularity Charge, and instead of using the gas, because I think it's 150-150 for the Singularity Charge, if I remember correctly, um, you actually put that in something else and get like a completely different tech, and then just surprise the guy. <laughs> so, mm. anyway... Um, the Protoss is a neat race, right Dave? Yeah. Yeah, yeah basically. Pretty cool. The one thing that I think, um, if this became a thing that happened more than like once every three months, the fact that the void rays move out with plus one, um, it's yeah. kind of a big giveaway that some kind of air cheese sort of thing is happening. Yeah. It's, it's got a very heavy air play. And here we see where things get a little bit interesting for uh, Pyro, and I think this may lead to what, um, uh, what, uh, what was that? Uh, his name in chat, um, Jubling was talking about regarding um, air coverage and being having a good presence on the map. Because if you have three void rays with plus one and a mothership, and then you make six cannons at or seven, eight. <laughs> this is definitely what you should do. Like, this is kind of like what I was trying to do before we got on here. <laughs> um, I didn't get my mothership nearly this fast, but I just took a third and spammed cannons out. I think yep. by the end of the game I had four bases and like 80 cannons. Yep. And a maxed carrier mothership. Yeah. So... Because, I mean, at this, like, at this point, why not? Like, you're just, you're going for something ridiculous. You have to stay alive until you have carriers out. Yep. And so now we see uh, plus two to air weapons is just about to complete... Uh, a couple more Void Rays are about to be out on the map. That makes a total of a six once these extra two are out. There is one Phoenix around just for a little bit of scouting, as we can see. He's just now finally heading inside. You can see that there are a couple of Spore Crawlers around. Infestors and a Nidus Worm are being uh, added in here. And it looks as if uh, Pyro is well aware of that Nidus Worm that's trying to be built in the bottom left-hand side of his base. Takes it out with the probes. That is enough of that. Um, yeah. A murder. What, what do you what do you do here as a zerg? What 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 are your thoughts on what you would do here? You've got a third whatever base you want. Look what he's. <laughs> um. What do you want to do here? Well, you want to just get a lot of infestors and corruptors, and then eventually a few brood lords. But I mean, Protoss doesn't like have an army. Like he's got like six void rays. Yeah, six void rays, a phoenix, and a mothership. So, you should be up to like eighty drones, which the zerg is. You should be, you should go up to like six bases. I mean, you should just put hatcheries everywhere. 
at this point and get as much gas as you possibly can. Um, and just spam Infestor, Corruptor, Broodlord. And try and control it as well as you can. Yeah, that's that's effectively what I had said. Because this, this also came up in uh, the subreddit r slash starcraft underscore strategy. Um, that someone had experienced this particular type of play as a Zerg and uh, wasn't sure how to deal with it. And yeah, the general consensus obviously is that you need to you need to say, look, screw it, the guy's got, he's only got a few Void Rays, uh, I suppose it's not really a few yeah. in the context of it. It's nine Void Rays now with plus two, almost plus three to weapons. Um, he's not going to be very, he's not going to be as mobile as you can be, but if you get enough Spore Crawlers down, uh, in fact, no, there's, there's so many Voids, like, but you want to take a look, you want to take the map as much as you can and uh, get that gas coming in so you can get all the corruptors, you can get all the infestors out that you need, and uh, try and do what you can against this. Imagine if those things had flux veins or whatever the fuck yeah. those things were called. <laughs> I was God, I miss so flux veins so much, man. God, I miss them. <laughs> oh, I like the recall. Oh. It's cute. Yeah, it's a nice recall. So, uh, yeah, we've. Um, We've got Songbyong Gu sitting here on a very nice drone count. He's up to 98, of course. This is normally the point where you'd want to put down a few spine crawlers to defend against that uh, sort of gateway Templar sort of Colossus kind of attack. But uh, obviously, you're not going to really need those against this style of play. Now, um, Pyro has got the three Stargates bringing out a, a few carriers each. We've got. Th uh, Three just about done, which brings which will bring in a total of five plus three to air weapons is almost complete, and plus three to shields is also just about done. <laughs> this is a very odd game. This is actually yeah, but really since cool. he's playing Protoss, he can just do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's really well done. He can play yeah. every game like it's big game hunters. Like <laughs> <laughs> guys, I'm building cannons and mass carries. <laughs> Well, the one thing for Zerg right now is he has way too many drones. He's got 110 drones, which will be, I mean, it's not terrible, but he needs to start... about 20 of those into spore crawlers in the middle of the map. Yeah, exactly. Would, would you consider doing the spore crawler version of the, uh, of the static defense push? Like, normally at, the, at this sort of yeah. um, middle stage of the game? You yeah, absolutely. That up? You'd, you'd, uh, uh, in so fact, yeah. I would go so far as to say that's something you absolutely need if you ever want to fight an army like this. Like, the mothership is just so ridiculous. Like, you just can't fight it. <laughs> yep. And as Zerg, like, yeah. And I think that's that's a very important thing. Like, um, the I think the Zerg that was uh, posting in the the Reddit thread that I was talking about, he went for Hydras. Hydras is a terrible idea because they're Hydras, but also because as you said, well, if there was no such thing as Storm. Yeah, but also because as you uh, as you pointed out, um, the mothership is going to vortex. You can't vortex the spore crawlers. So I think, yeah, that, that's a very good point, that you should uh, try and get those out. And look, these Corruptors not having a bad day, trying to go to the beach up at the top right-hand corner, getting cornered by Voids and Carriers here with plus three to weapons. Have a good night, so... Meanwhile, uh, there is an attack at the front. Very nice little Vortex there. Yeah, these are just, like... I don't know. I don't even know why he made these links in Bailey's. <laughs> I think it was because he... No, it's, oh, this he is Vortex! Good. No, I actually like that a lot. Just making like a handful of veins and some lings to bust in there. I think that's actually a good idea. Yeah. I think like if you're gonna do that, you could like do it way earlier. But I guess he just didn't know what he was dealing with or what he wanted to do. But look at the vortexes. What the hell? <laughs> All right, right here. If I see two vortexes get used, I immediately just max on corruptor and like suicide in on that army. Yep. Like, all the vortex is so up. important. Oh, the twenty-five corruptors that just popped in. Never mind. Yeah, the other, the other one thing that I also noticed during this game is that a lot of corruptors were kind of sacrificed in a way. Like that, that attack trying to push up to the top right-hand side. I'm not really sure what that was going to achieve. Like, with only a few corruptors, you can see that the Protoss has this really scary sort of void ray uh, carrier army with good upgrades. And you're only sitting on sort of one, two, uh, 
corruptors. You need to you need to get crank out those upgrades for the air, and then send in yep. like a good sort of uh, as you said, like a suicide force perhaps, but a decent force of corruptors nonetheless. You can't send in a small amount and just pretend that it's actually going to get anything done. No, you need. I mean, if they're going mass air like this, you just need to max on Corruptor and get a good bank and then just suicide in and kill that entire army and yep. then just make whatever units you can to try and counter and kill their just bases. Just make infinity roaches afterwards and then click all his bases down. <laughs> one a that shit. Yeah. And this is also yeah, one yeah. other thing that I noticed. You could probably is... honestly like make Muta because they're just going to be able yeah, to fight anything that. he pops out of the Stargate. Like it. I mean, I'd remax with like a ton of lings, and then like slowly start rebuilding my corruptor count. Oh, he needs to focus fire with these corruptors yeah, really badly. That was one other thing. He I could guess. actually just win this fight if he focus fires. Gotta kill that mothership. There you go. Yeah, he's ah focus fire the carriers. Okay, yeah, it. The folks firing was a little weak there. Yeah. I think he could have just straight up won that fight if he had just been more decisive, like immediately killed the mothership and then started clicking on the carriers. Putting the yeah, but removing that mothership firing. from the board and killing that many carriers, like he's gonna be able to remax on corruptors again. And probably yep. just like win. So at the moment we've got a lot of lings. That's good. He's Still got too many drones though. Like if he was down to like seventy drones right now, you could make like sixty more lings with this remax and just keep sending lings at like any weak point on the map, which at this point there isn't really one but <laughs> there's I mean, you could just like throw it out more hatches for larva, you could do all kinds of different stuff. Yeah, you just send the lings like up to the natural with your corrupt remax, like just keep throwing shit at this army because it is so it's like impossible to remake a carrier army. Especially so only on three stargates. He should just click down the Templar archives because it's the scariest. Yeah. Oh thing god! Exists, what are these corruptors oh, doing? You? They're just like flying over archons. No. No. Uh, oh, that's boy. unfortunate. Get him yeah, out killing of the fleet will be good. He still just has so much money. He needs to be just like making corruptors. Okay, yeah, there you go. Right click on. Oh, not focusing the carriers. Okay, there we go. Now we're focusing. Use corruption too. Always use corruption on these carriers. Always, always. I think also being a little bit daring by taking this base up at the top left may, like, as I said, it's going to be daring because there are carriers there, but this guy is playing very passive because he has to sit back because there is that threat of, you know, 20 corruptors coming out to say hello. And just taking that, in fact, there you go. He actually does come up here and tries to take this base. Uh, it gives you him just you might as well try it this well. one. You have 7,000 exactly. minerals, just like. Exactly. Just build seriously like, like, or so a ridiculous amount of spore crawlers and spine crawlers in the center of the map, and then move those up. Oh, these twenty-one roaches. I'm not a fan of this idea. There's too much supply. Roaches take up too much supply in this scenario. Like, you just want to make as many corruptors as you can. Let's dump all your gas into that, and then just make the rest slings and try and do whatever yeah, shenanigans. Twenty roaches just don't do anything to this army. Yeah. Especially if they don't have upgrades. This doesn't even do anything to the Archons. Really. Uh, and a beautiful Vortex there, capturing all of those Corruptors. And, uh, that's... Kind of that's just game when that yeah, happens. Yeah, exactly. Archons go in here and the game ends. Because you could... You could take the viewpoint that if your corruptors get in and they can take out a couple of the, of the carriers and really sort of downsize that army, then it's not as bad, considering of course one of the most powerful things about playing Zerg is that remax. But if you lose them and they don't do anything, then yeah. There you go. Hydra's coming out, not going to have a good time at all. Uh, these uh, charge lots just... Uh, busting in there and ripping all of them down. And the Archons, of course, are having a good time against the uh, Hydras as well. So, an interesting Everything strategy. Protoss has is just having a good time right now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, 
is uh, 15, 20, 22, 24, <laughs> 32 kills on one of the carriers. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah, it's all They're like Protoss units. They're meant to get infinity kills and never die. <laughs> um, so, viability of this, what, what do we think? Is that, is that, is it something you could do on ladder all day and have a good ratio of wins with it, or is it? Uh, I mean, no, probably not. You might be able to get away with it a lot until people really figure out an intelligent way to deal with it. But like, we haven't seen a a, a good, well thought through response yet. So, yeah, yeah and, like it, the Zerg got frustrated there at the end. Like he was doing really well. Like his game plan was good for like those first two attacks with the corruptors and the lings. That's exactly what you need to do. And they like the road tree max was just. That was so bad, like, I hate to say it like that, but yeah. you just can't use any gas on roaches. Like, using any gas on roaches is just a complete waste. You, all your gas needs to go to Infestor and Corruptor, and maybe Hydra if you have upgrades, but you didn't, so. Like, all your gas has to go there and to air upgrades, and then just, like, use Lings to try and do damage. Yeah. But, unfortunately... So I think, I think if you splash out, maybe throw this in every now and then, it's got a good chance. I mean, as as we said, uh, M one eight M threw it in in uh, in pro league. He got a he got a win against um. Who was it? Someone. He got a win against someone. Some guy. Yeah. Um, Some reserve player. And his his particular game there was also really about his mothership. He controlled the mothership really well and uh, used recall to his advantage because when M18M did this he only put like I think it was only like six cannons down at the, at the third base and then when he went to push in with um, with the carriers uh, there was there was a um, there was a big ling swell that then went up to his third base and instead of taking the mothership with the carriers he actually then went back recalled the carriers back after they did some damage and then killed the lings and then started back down again so that was also a part of the way uh, that you might want to incorporate this particular style of play, but uh, as we can see, Mr. Song Gong last card on Twitter, has uh, not had a, a good day at all. Archons, Void Rays and Carriers all storming inside, going to take this win from Hero here. Uh, but yeah, another way to use Carriers. Yeah, it's the big game hunter's way. <laughs> The no rush holy way. Yeah, let's call it the big game hunters build. <laughs> and the the game plan there was really cool. Like I, like uh, the fast mothership seems weird, but fast mothership plus cannons. That's a really good way to defend that third base with like no units. Like that's really cool game plan. I liked it a lot. Flabbergasted at this particular style of play. <laughs> I know I would have been. It's like it's when you just do some sort of Indra related move and exit the game. <laughs> I like, um, it's kind of like when I use carriers in PvP and people, like, just go GG and they just, you know, that's, um, that's it. So. Yeah. He's trying to float a hatchery to the corner of the map right now. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. That is that. Um, so, a bit of fun with that particular game. <laughs> um, of course, uh, yeah, we're, as, as I said at the start of the show, we're going to keep the show on this uh, Thursday night time slot. Uh, Thursday night for you guys. Um, if you have any particular topics that you wanted to talk about, uh, or you wanted us to talk about on the show, uh, strategy, of course, we're not going to talk about, you know, the latest picture of Hydra's stupid slutty girlfriend or some shit, I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is not, this is not our StarCraft. Um, hit us up, you can, uh, catch us on Twitter, of course, they're down there. 
in the bottom right. Uh, wait, hang on, it's over there. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, I always make sure to post on Twitter and everything before. Uh, yeah, and and we're not going to talk about Apollo's hair. Uh, I, I've already f <laughs> I've heard enough of that shit today. Um, but yeah, if you have any topics, let us know. Uh, I don't have one for next week, uh, so please tweet me or email me if you have one you want to talk about. Um, meanwhile, uh, gentlemen, uh, uh, murder. Any goodbye shoutouts, things, stuff? Uh, no. I'm gonna go shout out free this week. See how that works. Yeah, shout out Simba. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, though, man. I I really have fun doing this. No problems. Um, of course, uh, you'll be able to catch myself and uh, and Omoda casting the Sea Masters Cup, which will be on tomorrow. Uh, let's just say it'll be on in 26 hours from now. Um, it'll be very early for Omoda, which is going to be quite funny. And uh, yeah, we I, we're going to maybe possibly going to come along and say hello. Uh, maybe. It yeah. depends. We'll if see what I happens. have work or not yeah. on how awake I am. Yeah. <laughs> I would like. I would like to get on in there. Yeah. Um, it just depends since I'll, I'll be on call tomorrow, so we'll have to see. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. The your Twitter changed. I totally forgot. Oh well. Um. It's okay. I forgive you this time. Yeah. My bad. Next time though, Next we're gonna have issues. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Any shoutouts or hellos or anything for you? Um, shout out to, to Clutch, who's in chat, yeah. and to uh, Zombie Ritual, who was on earlier, and to Golem. Yep. Those guys in chat all the time. Yep. So. Good dudes, good dudes. Um, of course, make sure you follow me on uh, Twitter as well, and all that sort of cool stuff. Uh, jump on the channel, I haven't actually done any casts lately, I do apologize for that, but I have about five very long replays lined up. I'm talking 30 plus minutes that I'm going to hopefully get to this weekend. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll hopefully see you all next time. Uh, and yeah, thanks to everyone in the chat. It was very cool. I'll, uh, we'll see you all next time. Goodbye.